So it's so good to be back at Res Life. How many found out life goes better when you put God first? How many found that out? I just, I just seem to find life just seems to go better when you put God first, first in your heart, first in your life, first in your finances, in all those other areas. And, and, uh, and I can't think of a better place to do that than right here at Res Life. How many love your church? How many are thankful for your church? I was telling the last service, it's got to be pretty easy to love this church. It's easy to have a heart for the house when you know the house has a heart for you. Let me ask you this. Have you ever felt like not coming to church? Anybody ever felt like not? Be honest. It's okay. We're not, you're not going to hell or anything. It's okay. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't feel like coming to church. You know, when you don't feel like coming to church, it's probably when you need to come the most. You know, because uh, here's the thing I found. Faith is contagious. You didn't feel like coming, but all of a sudden you got in here, you got around other people that were full of faith, and before you know, it gets, it gets on you, it gets a little contagious, and you leave here feeling better, a little hope, a little peace, a little joy. How many, you didn't feel like coming to church, but you went ahead and came anyway. How many when you left, you're like, man, I sure am glad I did that. I sure am glad I did that. Yeah, it's just the way kind of it goes. And that's all part of putting God first, and I love uh, that you chose to do that today to come. To, here's the thing the Bible says, when you plant yourself in God's house, that your life will flourish. So when you leave these doors today, you can go head up to your car going, Father, I thank you this week. My life is going to flourish. My relationships are going to flourish. My health is going to flourish. I'm flourishing because I chose to plant myself. Just showing up is part of planting yourself. Just getting here is just saying, hey, I planted myself in God's house. And like I said, I think, can't think of any greater place to do that than right here at Res Life. So it's good to be with you this morning. It's my favorite time of the year. Uh, this is my, my favorite season. Uh, football, football season. How many like football? Yeah. How, many, how many have ever seen a team come back in the last quarter and accomplish more than they did in the first three quarters? Have you ever seen that happen? I know it didn't happen yesterday at the Michigan game, but, um, but it happens some, and sometimes. And just kidding. And I'm thinking, here we are in the last quarter of this year, right? It's the fourth quarter. It's late in the fourth quarter. But how many still believe God could do some things for us this year? God could just do some great things in your life this year. This year is not over with. Say this with me. Say the rest of my year will be the best of my year. I counted up 30-something days left this year, and then I started thinking, God created the entire world in six days. Think what he could do in 30-something days. So to say, oh, well, this year, how many had some things and goals and things you're believing for this year that you haven't seen happen yet? Yeah, we all did. One of my goals this year, I wanted to lose 25 pounds, right, this year. Here we are, you know, into November, I've only got 30 to go. But there's still hope this year. That's only a pound a day. This year's not over with yet. So you can't give up. Yeah, I'm getting up every morning. I run around the block two or three times, and then I put the block back under my bed. But uh, whatever, it is you, whatever it is you do. But, uh, uh, but, but I'm just saying, man, this is going to be a great year. This year's not over with yet. I'm not giving up on this year. And, uh, and so I, I just believe the rest of our year really could be the best of our year. So I'd encourage you just to get your faith up there and, and, and keep expecting Whatever you expect with confidence becomes your own self-fulfilling prophecy. If you, if you expect a little, believe a little, pray a little, ask a little, you'll probably receive a little. Even though God himself is able to do big things, how many know with God all things are possible? Right? If all things are possible, why don't we think bigger, dream bigger, pray bigger, believe bigger? It doesn't take any more energy to have a big dream than it does to have a little dream. So the only thing limiting you would be you, because God's not limiting you. He didn't even say you. You said, well, it just seems impossible. You, well, that's not your job, the impossible. That's his job. Your job is just to do the difficult. He'll do the impossible. He'll take care of all the rest of it. So I just encourage you just to believe God. It's going to be a great year, and it is Christmas season. That's always good, too, right? We just got over Thanksgiving, and I love Thanksgiving, but Christmas, you know, now all those Hallmark movies start, so I just look forward to that all year. How many, how many, how many uh, Hallmark movies? I love them. They're so intense, right? Like, you don't even want to go to the bathroom. Like, what may happen? So, it's like the plot of every Hallmark movie, right? A career woman who's uh, busy, too busy for love, goes to a small town where a handsome bachelor always seems to be, right? <laughs> Teaches her about the true spirit of the holidays. 
It snows, they kiss, and there's a dog, right? They're all the same right there. <laughs> Welcome to the, sorry to spoil it for anybody else. But anyway, hey, we just finished Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, I want to talk to you about that just for a minute. I like to break that word down, thanks and giving. Thanks, giving. Thanks and giving. I want to talk to you about thankfulness just for a few minutes and how thankfulness leads to generosity, how a thankful heart leads to an expression of gratitude in our life. And when we express gratitude, God blesses us. When he blesses us, we become thankful. When we're thankful, we give. When we give, he blesses us. When he blesses us, we become thankful. And all of a sudden, it starts in our life a cycle of generosity, a cycle of blessing. I I like to say that old saying, what goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. I'm going to talk to you about that just for a few minutes. If you got a, a, your phone or pen or paper, just write a couple of things down. I don't think, you know, this is the only month of the year we should be thankful for. You know, November, everyone's thankful and great, grateful. I think thankfulness should be a part of our life every day. There's always things to be grateful for, that attitude of gratitude and this cycle of blessing. I call it a series of fortunate events. It's amazing how this happens in our life. These two things, thanks and giving. Number one, let's talk about thanks just for a, for a few minutes. Say thanks. Yeah, it, we're all thankful. Today, I just did a podcast a couple weeks ago talking about the five ingredients to a, a great day. And one of the top ingredients to a great day was gratitude. Having, being thankful for the day. Being thankful that you woke up this morning. Everyone just take a deep breath. There's something to be thankful for. Just the fact that you woke up this morning is something to be thankful for. All around us is, 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 uh, is uh, opportunities to be grateful, to show a gratitude toward others. I like to do something I call the two-by-four method. The two-by-four method is, um, uh, you might have heard it a couple different ways. One time uh, earlier in, in our marriage, my wife and I were going to marriage counseling because, you know, she needed it. And, and, and so I wanted, to, I wanted to support her. And so we went, and uh, in there, they had the, 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 the counselor pull out this big two-by-four out from behind his desk, and he called, talked about the two-by-four method. Sometimes you just need a good two. I didn't like that method. This is different than that two-by-four method. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take two things. Let's say people and things, and list four people and four things you're grateful for. You take two categories and list four things. Now, what if you did that every day between now and the end of the year? I promise you it'll begin to start a habit in you where you begin to journal and begin to thank, be thankful for things every single day. I mean, people, you know hundreds of people in your life. I mean, you might start with your family. I'm grateful for my, my spouse. Or I'm grateful for my kids. I'm, uh, I'm grateful i got my nephews here uh, with me today, grateful how good they're turning out. One's about to graduate from eastern Michigan, right? Western Michigan, one of those Michigans. Yeah. <laughs> And the other ones up at Michigan State, and I'm mean, so proud of them and, and uh, all they've accomplished. I'm thankful for them. I, I'm thankful uh, uh, for my fifth grade teacher who taught me the, the uh, capitals of all the states. I'm, I'm thankful for the barista at Starbucks that made my latte today. I'm a, mem- I'm a member of the church, uh, the Latte of Day Saints. Um, so we worship over at St. Arbucks. Yeah. Anyway. Um, there's all kinds of things. And then, and then things to be grateful. You got your people and then you got your, your things. I'm thankful for a vehicle. I'm thankful I can walk. I'm thankful uh, 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 that, that I have a voice. I'm, I'm, you look at all these. I'm thankful I have running water. We were in Uganda earlier uh, in the year and they don't, a lot of people don't have running water. Man, I, I begin to see all the things that I have to be thankful for. You know, if you work part-time at Starbucks in America, you're in the top 10% of the wealthiest people in the world. We are so blessed just to live in a country like America. So we have so much to be thankful. And everything might not be perfect, like well, whatever your political thing is. But, but we, I mean, my goodness, to live here. My, my son, this isn't a political joke. My th- son just told me this the other day. He's, only, he's, he's a kid. He told me, he said, Dad, what would happen? What would the Secret Service say if someone pulled a gun on Donald Trump? Donald Duck. <laughs> anyway, he's a, it's a kid joke. But anyway, I thought it was... Anyway. See, what happens every day, what happens every day is, is when we make that attitude of gratitude, we, we start with thanksgiving in our heart. We, uh, we begin to appreciate all the blessings that we have in our life. You say, well, man, you don't understand. I can't pay my bills right now. Hey, if you can't pay your bills, be thankful you're not one of your creditors. 
There's always something to be thankful for. You see what I'm saying? And, and so look for ways to, look for ways to be, be thankful. Here, here's what I want you to remember. Remember this statement right here. Whatever you recognize, you become thankful for. Whatever you're thankful for increases in your life. I'm going to say it again. Whatever you recognize, you become thankful for. Whatever you're thankful for increases in your life. So the first step is recognition. Recognition is critically important to more of God's blessing. How many like to have more of God's blessings in your life? Yeah, you might as well. One, I mean, the first command God gave humans was be fruitful and multiply. Multiply means to increase. The first thing God said is I want you to be more than you are right now. I mean, you look in, what is it, Psalms 115, verse 14. The Lord would increase you more and more, you and your children. You look in the New Testament, and he doesn't even like things that don't increase. It didn't matter if it was a fig tree that wasn't producing fruit or a man with one talent. If it wasn't becoming more, God wasn't happy. So God's desire for you. How many believe the Bible? Let me just start with that, make sure I got, okay, good, that's over half of you. (laughs) Wouldn't you hate to find out it wasn't true? That'd be horrible, wouldn't it? Trying to do all that. You ever thought about that? Be honest. Anybody ever want, did God really write all that stuff? There's a lot of stuff. Anybody ever wanted that? Be honest. Come on. Okay, thank you. I've been to church my whole life. My dad's a preacher. My grandfather's a preacher. My great grand. I've been to church my whole life. And I've wondered, did God really write all? There's a lot of stuff in there. That's a big book. You know, I started, I started thinking one day, well, if God didn't write it, though, who did, right? You got to think about that. Because if he didn't do it, someone had to. And you start thinking of people you know. Right, because you got to narrow it down. Maybe my Uncle Tony did it. I don't know. He don't do a lot. <laughs> then I found there's that scripture that says, if you don't work, you don't eat. I said, my Uncle Tony didn't write that. I guarantee you. <laughs> I mean, if you just think of people you know, you could narrow it down. Maybe my wife wrote it. Submit to your, nope, wasn't her. <laughs> uh, how, many, how many, be honest, how many of you wrote the Bible, how many can think of like three things you would not have put in there? Like, I got eight commandments. That's where we're going with. No human being could have ever wrote a standard this high. So if God said it, I'm just crazy enough to believe it. And, and so when I, I think about it, he, he came that I might have life, have it in abundance. I, I call it the ultimate life. Ultimate means the best. Life is a way of living. So the ultimate life is the best way of living. That God has great things in, in store for me. And, and all these blessings are around me just waiting for me to recognize it. How often do you think little blessings happen in your life that you just failed to recognize? But if we begin to take, take notice of the, those little things. The other day I was at the grocery store. A person in front of me had a cart full of stuff. I had one thing. She said, you got one thing. Go ahead. You can go in front of me. Thank you, Lord, for favor. Really? You think that he, she's just being nice? See, whatever you recognize, you become thankful for. So you can go, you can go to the, the restaurant. The taste is going to be a 30-minute wait. Give you the little pager. And in five minutes, your pager goes off. Thank you, Lord, for favor. Really? You think maybe someone just left early. Whatever you're thankful for, whatever you recognize, you become thankful for. See, so often we fail to recognize the little things that God does in our life every day. And, and here's the thing. Gratefulness, gratitude, my goodness, how many have children in here? How many have children? Let me see your hand. How many, have you ever thought that your children were too grateful? <laughs> have you been like, kids, seriously, that's just way too much. I mean, you, you, the Bible says in everything give, in everything give, everything. So there, there, there couldn't be too much. My son, I, he's so grateful. The other day we're driving, I hear him in the back seat. He's singing you know, to me, and he's like, you're a good, good father. It's who you, and I'm like, he had his headphones, and he's like, what, what? I was like, oh, I thought you were, anyway, I, but, but I, it, he's never just been too grateful. I, 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 I told him, you know, we were at, at uh, Dave and Buster's one day playing video games. You know, you play the video games, you win tickets. He'd been winning tickets, and he'd, he'd won about 300 of them, so we were going to trade him in, because, you know, for tickets tickets, you get prizes, right? You go over to the thing, get prizes. So for 300 tickets, he was getting ready to get a, um, a, a pencil eraser, <laughs> right? That's, that was worth it, $87. <laughs> it's the best pencil eraser I've ever had. Anyway, he's getting ready. To, all of a sudden, this guy walks up and says, hey, I'm not going to use these if you want them, and hands my son a big stack of tickets. It was over 1,000 tickets. Like Solomon's his name. Solomon looked at those tickets. He looked at me. He goes, dad, favor 
I said, yeah, whatever you recognize. My son, I always, I was, he's a favor. He's a favor to me. I mean, my wife and I tried almost eight years, a little over eight years before we finally, uh, she finally got pregnant. And, and, so, and then we're so excited she's pregnant and find out that he's in her fallopian tube and they're going to go have to remove the baby. Well, my goodness, we've been believing for a long time. You know, never, never give up. What if you gave up just the day before your miracle? We didn't give up. They scheduled surgery. We still didn't give up. We just kept believing, went in for the surgery, and, and uh, they, they were getting everything ready. They said, hold on a minute. Someone's made a huge mistake. Your son's not in your, in your tube. He's in your womb exactly where he's supposed to be. There's no problem there. Uh, they, they called it a mistake. They called it a mistake. We just called it a miracle. And uh, she went on to carry him, and we recognized that was God's blessing, his hand of favor. He, she carried him all nine months, came out perfect. I mean, uh, well, not perfect, but I mean, he's... Uh, you know, the pregnancy, is, he was born C-section. But, I mean, you can't even tell when you see him. He looks totally, he looks totally fine. But uh, um, I told someone the only way you can really tell he was born C-section is whenever he leaves the house, he goes through a window. But other than that, he's totally fine. But, see, here's the thing. Whatever you, whatever you recognize you become thankful for. So this, this law of recognition, let's talk about this just for a minute, the law of recognition. Everything you need is already in your life, just waiting your recognition of it. Everything you need is already there, just waiting for you to recognize it. A friend of mine had a nice piece of property. He wanted to put a pond in on his property. He said, what if we dug a pond right here, put a fountain in? That'd be beautiful to have a little pond out there. I could sit out by the pond. He said, what would be better is if I had a little hill. If I had a hill, I could put a gazebo on the hill. I could sit in the gazebo, look down at the pond. That'd be beautiful, but he didn't have a hill. And they started digging out the pond, getting the pond ready. So they started digging the dirt out. They kept stacking the dirt over on the sides. They dig it out. They put it on the side. Pretty soon he noticed there was a hill. There was a hill right next to his pond. He had never seen it before because the hill was inside the pond until they dug it out. Everything he needed was already right there. He just failed to recognize it. What if we begin to recognize more of God's blessings in our life? Talking about recognition, a lady uh, had a heart attack when the hospital was in the, in the, on the operating table, found herself in heaven, found herself before God. She's like, God, is, is, it, am I, is it my time? Is, am I, is this my time? And he said, oh, no, said, don't worry, you're going to be fine. You've, you've actually got 30 years left to live. She's like, 30 more years? He said, you've got 30 more years. All of a sudden, she came to, she's in recovery. She said, you're not going to believe this. I just had this experience. I went, I went to heaven. I talked to God. He told me I've got 30 years left to live. Doctor said, that's amazing. She said, yeah, you know, I was thinking, if I've got 30 years left to live, she said, I'd like to look good those last 30 years. So I'm thinking since I'm already here in the hospital, I was wondering if you could do a few things for me. She said, I'd like to get a few things lifted and tucked and some things stretched and pulled. And it, I mean, I'm here already, so I got 30 years. Can we do this? The doctor said, hey, you're here, might as well. So he went to work stretching and pulling and tucking and all that kind of stuff. And so he got her all done, ready to go. She was about ready, ready, ready to be released after her recovery. And uh, she called in a stylist, came in, redid her hair. Man, she looked great. 30 more years. She's going to look good. They released her from the hospital. She was headed across the parking lot to the car when an ambulance came by, hit her, and killed her. She ends up back in heaven. She's like, God. She goes, what in the world? What am I doing here? You told me I had 30 years left to live. He looked at her. He said, that was you. <laughs> Recognition. I don't know. It's, sometimes he's just come to me. I, I, I don't know. It's, uh, Whatever you recognize, that attitude of gratitude, whatever you recognize, here's the thing, you become thankful for. Thankfulness. The, the, the attitude of, of, of gratitude. Uh, how many have to work at being thankful sometimes? Be honest, you got to work at it a little bit. Yeah. How many have to just work at your whole attitude sometimes? <laughs> it needs a little bit of, where I tell people all the time, i got to work nonstop. I was born a pessimist. So working on a positive attitude, I mean, my, even my blood type is B negative. You know, so I mean, it's, it's constant work. You probably heard about, I might have told you this last time I was here about the two twins that were born identical twins. Couldn't tell them apart. I mean, identical. The only thing that was identical, though, was the way they looked. Everything else was completely different. If one was hot, the other was cold. TV is too loud, the other thought it was too quiet. One was an optimist, one was a pessimist. 
So their birthday came up. The dad thought, you know, I'm going to try a little something. They're so different. Let me do a little experiment. He went into the, the pessimist room, and he filled his room up with all kind of games and toys and gifts and just awesome, awesome stuff. Went down the hallway to the optimist room. In his room, he put just a big pile of horse manure. He said, I'm going to see what happens with these kids when they wake up. The pessimist woke up. He saw all the gifts and toys and started crying. He said, Dad, what did you do? Why did you do this? This is horrible. All my friends are going to be so jealous that I got all this stuff. It's horrible. Half this stuff needs batteries. It's all going to break eventually. I can't believe you did this to me, Dad. This is horrible. The dad's like, I can't believe this kid's response. And he said, I got to go down and see what's happening with the other kid. As he got closer to the optimist room, he heard laughing and jumping. He swung the door open. There's manure flying everywhere. He's like, what in the world? He said, what are you so happy about? He said, Dad, with this much manure, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times it's just all in how you look at it. So with an attitude of, of gratitude, a thankful heart, I, as, as I travel around the, the country, different places, one of the things I always try to do is learn the word thanks. It's, it's amazing that one word, it works wonders. It establishes relationships. People begin to recognize, uh, see that you realize and recognize their effort. And it makes you more memorable, the word thanks. Thanks. I was in Paris and I learned, merci, merci. Uh, in Indonesia, it's there in February. Indonesia, it's Teramakasi, Teramakasi. And uh, I got mixed up first three days. I'm like, Teramasu, Teramus, Teramus. They kept bringing me dessert. Anyways, it worked out. But um, uh, if you're in South America, gracias, you know. If you're in South Florida, <laughs> gracias. Anyway, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it, it's amazing what a little bit of thankfulness can do because whatever you recognize, that pivotal place between recognition and blessing is thankfulness. Say thanks. There's an outward expression. And, and here's the thing. The, the attitude of gratitude, there's an outward expression. There's an inward uh, uh, thanksgiving that, that happens in our life. And it helps you to realize things. Just that maintaining an attitude of gratitude each day, you develop habits. Like you start appreciating what you have instead of what you don't have. How many have ever found sometimes you start focusing on all the things you don't have instead of being thankful for what you do have? The other day, I, I got a new car, and I was pumping gas, and I looked down, and I noticed there was a little scratch on the, on the bumper, and I was so upset. I'm like, I don't know if a, a grocery cart, something hit it. I don't know what happened, but I just got this car, and I can't believe it, and I'm, all I can do is see this scratch, this little, little, just a little scratch right there, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm pumping gas, and all I can just look at, all of a sudden, the car pulls up at the pump next to me, and it looks like it just got hit by a semi-truck. I mean, literally, the, the trunk was in the back seat. And I'm looking at this car, I'm like, I can't even believe they can drive it on the road. And all of a sudden, I'm like, well, that, man, that scratch isn't really that, my scratch isn't that bad after all, is it? And when you look at and you see, you start appreciating what you have. You start appreciating where you're at. An attitude of gratitude helps you, gives you more peace and joy because your point of view begins on a more positive note. Your outlook, it, it makes all the difference in the world. It, it, with, an, with an attitude of gratitude, you handle challenges differently. When challenges and things, it begins, you, you, you begin with a more appreciative mindset. Thank God they found it early. Thank God that, that my friend had the faith to carry him through. Thank God for hearing my prayers. Thank God for answering my prayers. Maybe it's thank God for not answering my prayers. I never could figure that one out. Why would, that, why would you be thankful for God not answering your prayer? Remember that? There's an old song by Garth Brooks that said, thank God for unanswered prayers. And I never could figure that out. Why you would want, till I went to my 20th high school reunion and saw my old girlfriend. But I was like, thank God for that unanswered prayer. But anyway, it's just, maybe that's where it came from. But here, here's the thing. Here's, here's what it says in Colossians chapter 2. Verse number seven, Colossians chapter two, verse number seven, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will be strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Thank you, isn't tough for most people to say, but modeling a spirit of gratitude is a completely different thing. I mean, when you model gratitude, it comes out of you. It, it's not only you get upset. How many have ever been late to work and you, you caught all the red lights? Seems like all the red lights. And you're just like, I can't believe this. Of course, the day that I'm running late is the day all these lights. What about all the days that they turn green? You didn't have any problem. Were you thankful? Thank you, Lord, for a great 
trip to work today. When, when the gratitude is in you, it comes out of you. I love what John F. Kennedy said. He said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Thankfulness. Here's what thankfulness does. Thanks brings out giving. Out of a heart of thanksgiving, we begin to give. Let's talk about that for a minute, giving. Thanks and giving. Because, you see, when you recognize your blessings, you become thankful for them. Or you should become thankful for them. Your thankfulness causes you to give. It's kind of a natural outpouring of appreciation. When I'm thankful, I want to give back. Maybe I want to send flowers. Maybe a thank you note. Someone the other day sent our family to a, a, a sporting event, said, hey, we, want to, we just want to, you know, we appreciate you. And that we had a whole family outing because of someone's gratitude. Gratitude always brings action. You don't just sit quietly. I, uh, I, I saw the whole church earlier. We were all standing and, and worshiping God, giving thanks out of a heart of gratitude, we, we worship him and we give, we give thanks and we give praise of the love in our heart. So gratitude equals action. Action, the, the gratitude action is giving, thanks and giving. And what happens is it creates a cycle of blessings in our life where what we said, what goes around comes around. As you give, God gives back to you. As you give, God gives back to you. How, how, we, how blessings are guaranteed in our life is through our giving. I mean, we said we believe the Bible. Here's a scripture, uh, Luke 6, 38. Luke 6, 38, you've probably heard this scripture before. Give, and it'll be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, uh, will, will men pour into your, into your lap, and it'll be, it'll be uh, and with the same measure you give, the same measure, it'll come back to you. So when you give, it'll be given back to you. How, how many believe the Bible again? Let me see your hand. Okay, it, it, sometimes people pick certain scriptures. They like this scripture, but they don't like that one. I'm going to go with the, uh, the, the Romans one, John 3, 16. I like that one, but Malachi 3, let, I'm, I'm skipping that one. I was trying to teach my son this. We were talking about giving tithe and offering, and we, we give back to God. And, and uh, I learned that growing up in church. I'm trying to teach it to my son, make sure he understands it. I grew up a little different uh, the way I learned it. When I, when I look at it now, I mean, we give to God. Abraham, he started the whole tithe and offering thing bringing a portion back to God, the whole tithing thing, came from Abraham out of his thankfulness, out of his thankfulness for all God had done for him. It wasn't because he read the Bible. They hadn't written the Bible yet. He didn't read any books about it. He said, God, you've been so good to me, and out of gratitude, I want to give back. I want to give back. So I'm, I'm teaching this. I, like I said, I didn't grow up that way. We, we learned in church, you know, you better, you better pay your tithe or God is going to kill you. That's it. That's it. We went to kids' church. They saw, taught us songs when we were kids. You know, God will take it out of your hide if you don't pay your tithe. You know, that we, that's the kind of stuff we learned. We were scared. Like, God was like the godfather of the mafia. Tithe is like protection money. Just give God your money. It won't break your legs. So I'm, I'm trying to teach this to my son, right? You know, we, we give to God because we're grateful. Everything you've got came from God. So he got $50 for his birthday. So I'm like, hey, you got $50 for your birthday. How much belongs to God? He said, none of it. That's what you mean. None of it. You got $50. How much do you give to God? He said, it's my birthday money. He said, I don't have a job. I said, that doesn't matter. It's, it's, it still came from God. He goes, that's not this money. It came from Grandma. <laughs> it came through Grandma, but she got it from God. Trust me. And you better give God some money. He's going to kill you, son. <laughs> I didn't say that. I, I, well, finally, we got down to understand 10%. He gave $5. He had, he had $45 left, so we were talking. And, and a couple days later, we were at lunch, and he goes, hey, Dad, can I pay for lunch today? I was like, that's awesome. He's getting it. Yes, buddy, you can pay for lunch because he had $45. You know? And he's like, okay. He said, let me have your credit card. <laughs> Shoot. You know, I thought, yeah, gave him the credit card. He paid. He said, can I sign the check? I'm like, sure, whatever. He's like signing his name. He goes, hey, Dad, what's a tip? I go, well, tip's where we give the lady who's been helping us. We give her, you know, 20% to thank her for her help. He said, well, Dad, that doesn't make any sense. I said, what do you mean that doesn't make any sense? He goes, Dad, we've only known her for like an hour. <laughs> he said, you're giving her 20%. He said, we've known God our whole life. You only gave him 10. <laughs> I said, wow, that's a pretty good catch right there, son. And, uh, and, 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 and half of you, we can't even get to do that. But 
kidding. I'm kidding. Kind of. But see, when you understand it's all his anyway, he gives it back to you as you give to him, as you're faithful and you're giving. I love that scripture, giving will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down. I started thinking about this the other day. Have you ever been too lazy to take out the garbage so you just pressed it down? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're like, I don't want to take it out yet. So you just push it down a little bit. Why? Because when you push it down, it makes room for more. And all of a sudden, that's what God said. When, you, when I bless you, I want to press it down. More, more blessing. I can put in more. And then when, the, when you press it down as much as you can and you take the bag out of the, out of the can, what do you do? You shake it together, right? When you shake it together, what happens? You got more room. You still don't have to take it out. You can sit it next to the can and put some more stuff in it. You can keep putting more stuff in until it gets to its overflow, and then finally you got to wrap it up. And God said, that's how I want to bless you. When you give, I'm going to give it back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's how I want to, I want to bless you. And, uh, and that begins this cycle of blessing. He promises to pour his blessings out in our life. The purpose of God's blessings are not for you to get blessed. They're for you to be a blessing. Romans, uh, or no, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 8 says that the Lord would give you the power to create wealth. He didn't say he was going to give you money. He says he's going to give you the ability to create it. That's a job. That's a, an invention. That's a, an, an opportunity, some way to generate money. Why? So that you can establish his covenant, right? What's his covenant? I always thought the covenant was Deuteronomy 28. You'll be blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed in the city. Everything I put my hands to will be blessed. Ooh, he's going to give me the ability to get some money so I can be blessed. And really, that's not the covenant at all. The covenant is back in Genesis chapter 12, where he says, I will bless you so that you can be a blessing. That's why God blesses you. It's like the purpose of a water pipe. The purpose of a water pipe is not to get wet. The purpose of a water pipe is to distribute water, right? In this building are pipes. None of them are, the purpose of none of them are to get wet. The purpose of them are to distribute water. Now, in the process of distributing water, how many know the pipe gets wet? It's not the purpose of the pipe. It's just part of the process. And the purpose of God's blessings in your life are not so you can get blessed. They're so you can be a blessing. In the process of being a blessing, how many know God will bless you? I mean, that's what, the, that's what the Bible says, but it's not the purpose of the blessing. It's just part of the, uh, it's part of the process. As I'm a blessing, he gives back to me good measure, pressed down, shading together, and he gives me opportunities to, to, to cause that blessing to increase in our life, like, like we have uh, next, next Sunday with our Heart for the, uh, heart for the Kingdom offering. And then I, I love Pastor Charles talking last night and just his heart to see this building debt-free, to see the, the, this thing taken care of. Because how many, how, many ever, how many have some debt in your life or ever have had a little bit of debt? How many have had to give up other things or not be able to do other things at the moment because you needed to take care of some, uh, some debt? There's so much more you could have done if you just would have had that extra little space. Same thing with the kingdom of God. I mean, we, there's so much more we could do, so many more lives we could touch, so many more things that could be changed. As we, as we release this, we've got a beautiful place to worship God. We can move that off. I mean, wouldn't it be amazing? It's 9.7, I think is what Pastor said. How many like to be able to go, hey, uh, Pastor, you know, put me down for 100,000 of that. Let's, let's get this thing taken care of. How many like to be able to, how many like, it's not a pledge, I'm just asking, I'm just asking. How many like to be able to do that? Yeah. I might tell you this last time I heard about a church, got a phone call, and the receptionist answered the phone. The guy said, I'd like to speak to the head hog at the trough. The assistant said, excuse me, do you mean our pastor? He said, that's what I'm talking about, the head hog at the trough. She's like, that's kind of rude. That's, that's our pastor. We love him. We respect him. We, we honor him. We don't talk about him like, like that. Can I help you with something? He said, yeah, I heard about the building. I just want to help it get paid off. I wanted to make a $100,000 donation. And the receptionist said, hold on. Let me see if Porky's in. <laughs> see, the more blessed you are, the greater blessing you can be. How many like giving? How many like giving? Yeah, most of us do. We kind of can't help it. I remember when this, when this really hard for giving. You know, it's actually a spiritual gift. How many look for ways to give? 
I'm going to look for ways to get. See, there's a lot of people in here. A lot of times I find when, when people are looking, always looking for ways to get, they, they have that gift, that spiritual gift, the gift of giving. It's in Romans chapter 12. You can read about it. It's just like the gift of faith, the gift of healing. It talks about the gift of giving. There's some people that are just, they're gifted to, to, to bring increase so that they can advance the kingdom and be a giver and a, and a blessing. And I remember when that was first released, and I, I might have told you a little bit about this when I was here last year. Uh, I'll never forget when that was released in my life. And it, was, it wasn't a place when I was given 100000 at the time. I remember it was a, a, a Sunday like, like we're going to have here next Sunday, with a heart for the kingdom. It was a special offering to advance the kingdom and the, and the ministry of the church. And I love the church. I love, how many love your church again? I find it easy to give to the things that you love. Like if you love your wife, it's easy to give to her. My wife, she knows I love to give. She woke up on our anniversary. She said, honey, today you know it's our anniversary. I said, I know. She said, I had a dream last night. You're going to give me a diamond necklace. She said, what do you think that means? I said, when you open your presents, you're going to find out what it means. She was, she was so excited. I gave her a gift. She was ripping the paper off. I, I bought her a, a, this book on the meaning of dreams. I, I didn't know. I have a clue what it meant. But anyway, I hope that helped her. But, but here's the, when, you, when your heart is to give, and I'll never forget, this was, goodness, 21 years ago when I really realized I had this gift for giving. We were, we were in our church. It was a Sunday, uh, like we're going to have right here, where we had an opportunity to give big to the kingdom of God. And at that time, my wife and I lived in a little government-assisted apartment, a little Section 8 housing. We didn't have a bed, had a little air mattress, uh, didn't have a dining room table and chairs. We just got married, just starting out. And all of a sudden, we're in the service, and, and pastor's like, hey, there's people, some people can give $50,000, and some people can do this, and other people can, it's every one of us doing our very best, and he's encouraging us. He goes, there's some people that can give $500. I remember him saying that, and I'm thinking, $500? I was sitting on the second row right over here thinking, wow, I sure hope God speaks to them. I didn't want to be one. Just wherever they were, I was hoping God speak to them. All of a sudden, I felt like God said, you're one of them. I want you to give 500 I said, oh, shoot. I started to reach for my wallet. About the time I, I did, the guy next to me said, I'm one of them. I said, like, whew, I guess I overheard God talking to him. <laughs> I put my wallet back in my pocket. My wife leaned over and says, God telling you anything? I said, I don't know. Is he telling you anything? She said, I think we're supposed to give 500. I said, oh. I remember filling out that envelope. <laughs> I'll never forget it. Ink was smearing from the tears. God loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> he also loves uncheerful givers. <laughs> he loves everybody. <laughs> I tell you what, though. If you're happy every time you give, you probably don't give a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of times I willing, yes. Obedient, fine. Happy, no. no not. I had $503 in my checkbook. When you have $503 and God wants 500 of it, you want to make sure he knows what he's doing. You know, I, was, I remember I kind of leaned my checkbook up toward heaven so he could see how much I had in there. He said he already knew how much I had. That's why I didn't ask for more. People are like, you shouldn't cry when you give to God. I said, I'm not. I'm just watering my seed. It's $500. It was everything, everything that we had, everything we had. But here's what I learned that day. When God speaks to you about a seed, he's got a harvest on his mind. See, God already always promises on the other side of a seed is a, is a harvest. That's why I don't like to make donations. A donation ends with a receipt. A gift ends with a thank you note. A seed ends with a harvest. And God has great, how many have got some harvest, some things you're believing for right now in your life? And I believe what you make happen for God's house, God makes happen for your house. And we have an opportunity, and I'll never forget that day, God spoke that to my wife, and I said, what you make happen for my house, I'll make happen for your house. I'm like, we don't even have a house, we live in an apartment. I didn't even get it at the time, but I had this desire to give. Next year, we gave $1,000. I always try to do more the next year than I did the year before. I set a goal, I wanted to give $100,000. And I, if I'm ever going to give $100,000, i got to start with where I'm at, right? It's like working out. You don't walk in the gym and go, okay, I'm going to bench press 500 pounds first day. 
doesn't work like that. You start with where you're at. Maybe it's 100 pounds. And you bench press 100 pounds till you got it down. Then what do you do? Add a little weight on the end. Get it up to 150. When you get 150, what do you do? Add a little weight on the end. Get it up to 200. You just keep working your way up. Same thing with, with giving. I'm just working my way up. One day I want to give $100,000. Started with 500. Next year I gave 1,000. Next year I remember $2,500. I'm just working my way. I'm just working my way up. I bench press, you know, I bench press now right, right around 3.30. Um, or four o'clock, right around that time. But I just keep, you just keep working your way up. But in my, in my giving, I just kept working my way up, $2,500, $5,000. And, and, and until it was several years before we were able to ever give that $100,000. But one day, I had a dream, and we were able to do it. We just kept working our way. I would encourage you, whatever you did last year, what if you stretched just a little further this year? What if you did just a little more than you did last year. I mean, this increase thing is a, is a God thing. It increase our giving, he increases our receiving. Because that scripture ends with the same measure you use, that's the same measure he gives back to you. So you can give in teaspoons, you can give teaspoon, uh, and he gives it back. And, and Well, the Bible says the word of the generous gets larger and larger. The word of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. How many want God to enlarge your world? And he gives us incredible opportunities like we have our heart for the world to advance his kingdom. And in the process, he blesses our lives as well. I'd encourage you as you're praying, that's really what you have to do. Just pray and ask God what he wants you to do. But I promise you, I find that God will always stretch you uh, beyond what's comfortable. To say, what, what is it? What is, I, I, what is it you can do today that will make a difference in your tomorrow? Thanks and giving. Out of a heart of thanksgiving, what God's blessed you with, you give back to him, and it's amazing what he'll do in your life.